there's a there's a card that's blocking the road inshallah ta'ala so if can somebody well, come on. remove that barakallahu feekum a clio ro13 a clio ro13 please remove that barakallahu feekum So there's one more thing that I had forgotten to um, announce and that was that this le particular lecture should have been Himayat al-Islam al-Usra, how Islam guards the household. However, that has been changed and uh, it has been changed to Wasail al-Hayat al-Sa'ida. Inshallah ta'ala, the, the, the lecture that was meant to be now will be gi given tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, after Salatul Asr. And the reason why the Sheikh did that was so that he can spend a bit more time talking about it due to its importance. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillahi alladhi kataba al-sa'adata لمن أطاعه واتبع هداه والصلاة والسلام على سيد السعداء وإمام المتقين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله ومن تبعه بإحسان وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين كما قرأتم وسمعتم أن هذه المحاضرة في وسائل الحياة السعيدة وقبل أن نعرف هذه الوسائل لا بد أن ننبه على السعادة نفسها فهي المصطلح الأغلى في الحياة كل العلوم تبحث عنها وكل الطرق تسير إليها وكل الأهداف تنشدها فما تضع أهدافا إلا لكي تسعد وكل الرغبات تريدها فما من رغبة تدور في نفسك إلا لأجل سعادة تطلبها بل إننا نموت من أجلها فيسعى الإنسان في المخاطر من أجل تحقيق السعادة كل الناس يبحثون عنها يبحث عنها الطفل في ألعابه والمراهق في نزواته والكهل في آماله بل وحتى المريض في دوائه يبحث عن السعادة فهو يأخذ الدواء حتى يخفف الألم فيسعد وكل حركة في هذا العالم تدور في فلك السعادة اختلف الناس في كل شيء إلا في السعادة والبحث عنها لم يختلفوا بل اتفقوا وهذا الأمر الوحيد الذي اتفقوا عليه أن الغاية المنشودة هي السعادة اختلفوا في دياناتهم وأخلاقهم وألوانهم وأشكالهم وطبائعهم ولم يختلفوا في أن غاية مرادهم أن يكونوا سعادة فما هي السعادة الحقيقية المنشودة؟ إذا السعادة هي مدار هذا الكون والناس كلهم يبحثون عنها فهي سبب اتفاقهم وهي سبب اختلافهم فاتفقوا على البحث في السعادة 
واختلفوا في طريقة الوصول إليها إذا أدركت هذه الحقيقة فلابد أن نضع قواعد للسعادة المنشودة حتى إذا أردت البحث عن السعادة فلابد أن تبحث عن سعادة هذه خصائصها وأولى تلك الخصائص وتلك القواعد في البحث عن السعادة اعلم أولا أن الحياة التي نعيش فيها ليست هي المستقر والمستودع بل هي الممر والدابة التي نسير إليها إلى الحياة الأبدية التي فيها المقر والغاية فإذا هل تبحث عن السعادة في الدنيا أم تبحث عن ماذا المقر السعادة في المقر الدائم إذا هذا هي الخصيصة الأولى لا بد أن تبحث عن السعادة لمكان دائم أبدي القاعدة الثانية اعلم أن السعادة منها ما هو مؤقت لحظي ومنها ما هو دائم أبدي فالعقل منك أن تبحث عن ما يبقيك سعيدا في كل أحيانك فأما السعادة المؤقتة غائبا غالبا يحدث بعدها الملل فمن يحب شيء دنيوي ها مؤقت ودائما يفعله يفعله وإن كان جميلا سيمل منه مثلا إنسان بجواره مكان جميل جدا وفيه أنهار وفيه جبال وفيه وديان كل يوم ينظر إليه سيمل منه ليس كذلك؟ سيبحث عن الصحراء بعد ذلك حتى ينظر في السعادة فيها لأنها مؤقتة لحظية إذا علمنا ذلك كله وعلمنا أن السعادة هي الغاية المنشودة وها هنا قاعدة مهمة إذا علمنا أن السعادة هي الغاية المنشودة والناس في طريقها مختلفون فهل يعقل أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يغفل عن هذه الغاية العظمى تعالى الله عن ذلك أو لابد أن يحددها بطريق معصوم ومضمون لابد أن الله سبحانه وتعالى حددها بطريق معصوم مضمون فابحث عن ذلك الطريق حتى تحصل على السعادة الأبدية نعم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللسامعين ولجميع المسلمين أجمعين الله عز وجل يبود أو شيخ وهذا time once again and this topic is the means of and the different ways of a true happy life a true happy life meaning the happiness of this life and the sheikh he started by praising Allah the Almighty and sending salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Shaykh, he said, may Allah preserve him and reward him. He says, as you guys have read the title of this topic and have heard that which we're going to discuss, then we should know that verily in this world is something that each and every single person searches for. Each and every single person searches for happiness. But before we get on to this topic and actually um, delve deep into it, then we should know what are the means. What does it mean? 
the actual wording happiness السعادة. what does it mean then the sheikh he said that from the linguistic meanings of this word is that it means it is the most expensive thing something that is priceless within this world i.e. happiness each and every single thing searches for this specific uh, ex priceless thing which is happiness every single person that treads the path treads the path searching for this specific thing which is happiness everyone that has a goal or an intent or an investment whatever it may be or some sort of zeal or love for something that they want to do the end result or that which they want to get to is happiness and the sheikh he went on to say and he said that verily to add to it that we even die in search of this specific thing which is happiness a young child searches for this happiness through his toys or her toys a young child and the one that is in their teens they also search for this happiness with regards to them visiting different places and doing certain things upon the age of teenage age and even the one that is old searches for the happiness in hope by hoping having hope because they have reached the age of, of uh, uh, an old age and then the sheikh he added and he said may Allah preserve him that even the sick searches someone that is sick or someone that has been uh, diagnosed with an illness someone that has an illness or a sickness also searches for this happiness in what way in terms of a cure so the sheikh he said and he went on to mention he said that so many people it doesn't matter where they come from the people differ with regards to the way they take or the means or the journey they take to this thing which is happiness but the actual main goal or the end result is all the same which is happiness they all want the ones that the sheikh mentioned and he said also other than them they all want to get this one thing which is happiness but the the path they take that road that journey they take toward towards it differs however they have all agreed and it's in agreement when you see with regards to that which they do that the number one thing that they want is happiness it doesn't matter what uh, it doesn't matter of <clears throat> their background their color the way they look the way they are with regards to status in terms of wealth and what have you the number one thing that they have is that they all are searching and yearning for happiness so what is happiness in reality the sheikh he said that happiness is something that lies about which every single person within this universe wants and yearns for the sheikh then he went on to say and he said no that in this world the world that we live in today it's not a world and he said that these there, there's different principles with regards to actually attaining happiness he said the first one the first principle is you have to know and realize okay you have to comprehend and it has to be something that is in your state of mind something that you always keep at the the back of your brain that you know when you realize that this world that we live in today it's not a world of eternity but rather it is a place and livelihood that we will leave every single one of us is going to leave it it's like Think of it, the Sheikh, the example he gave it said, think of it as a corridor, okay? A corridor, a pathway, or a hallway, or a corridor. That every single thing that passes within it, at the end, is going to reach an end result. But, is everyone that goes and treads upon this corridor, are they all going to attain happiness? That is the question. So if you know, and you realize, that this world we live in, is just pass by. We're all past buyers then you would realize and know that happiness and you would know where happiness lies the sheikh he said as for the second point second principle that you should know that there are certain things that we may go through or pass by 
that are fixed. Meaning it doesn't last forever, they are fixed. Mu'akkat, it doesn't last forever. There's a specific time where it will come to an end. And then there are things within this happiness that will last forever. So the Shaykh, he said once again, he said, within with regards to happiness, there are certain things that last for a fixed amount of time, meaning it's not going to last forever. And then within the happiness, there are things that will last forever. So the one that has the right state of mind, he will search for the things that will last in his worldly life that will help him attain happiness and also it would last. And then the Shaykh, he said, for example, he gave an example, a beautiful example. May Allah preserve him and reward him. He said, if someone lives besides a place where he can see rivers and streams and every single day he sees this beautiful site, it's like a scenic area where he lives. Besides him, beautiful mandar, beautiful site. So this person that lives in this place, if he sees it every single day, day in, day out, eventually he's going to get bored of it. Eventually he's going to get bored of it. So then the Shaykh he gave the same example and he said that there are things with regards to happiness that last and things that don't last. And then the Shaykh he said an, an important principle that if we know that this happiness, we all can attain it and it can be attained however the different paths towards happiness differ from person to person. So then the Shaykh he said, so is it right for a person? Does it make sense for a person to make Allah Azza wa Jal? <coughs> the Shaykh he said, is it right for a person to make this path that he takes to happiness in that which Allah Azza wa Jal has not prohibited? In that which Allah Azza wa Jal, sorry, has made a uh, prohibition. Then, and then the Shaykh, he said that with regards to one state of mind, we have to know and realize that Allah Azza wa Jal has made the people differ with regards to their mindset in how to attain this happiness. Some of them attain it in a peaceful manner and in a manner that suits, but some of them don't. كذلك السعادة المنشودة والمستجلبة لحياتنا والمرادة لا بد أن يكون محلها أصليا إن سعد سعد كل شيء فينا وإن لم يسعد كتب الشقاء لكل شيء فينا فلا يعقل أن تبحث عن السعادة لجسمك لأنه سيبلى ولا يعقل أن تبحث للسعادة في عمرك لأنه سيذهب وكذلك لا يعقل أن تبحث عن السعادة لشهوتك لأنها لحظة وستزول وإنما تبحث عن السعادة لقلبك فإن سعد سعد كل شيء فيك ولأجل ذلك تجد بعض الناس أحيانا مقعدا مريضا لا يتحرك شيئا فيه ولكنه قلبه سعيد فيكون أسعد الناس بل إنه أحيانا يسعد من بجواري وهم أصحاء ويعطيهم السعادة وهو مقعد لا يتحرك لماذا؟ لأن القلب قد سعد فسعدت كافة الجوارح وأما إذا كتب الشقاء على القلب شقيت الحياة ولم يرى شيئا إلا شقيا في حياته ولو أراد أن يحصل السعادة بأي طريق لن يحصلها ولو ملك كنوز الدنيا كلها فإنه لن يسعد ما دام قلبه شقيا والله سبحانه وتعالى كما قلنا لم يجعل هذا المطلوب الأعظم هو السعادة بدون طريق موصل لها بل جعل لها وسائل وأسباب من حصلها فقد حصل السعادة وهذه الأسباب 
الموصلة إلى السعادة تنقسم إلى ثلاثة أقسام إما أسباب دينية شرعية ذكرت في الكتاب والسنة فمن حققها ومن أتى بها حصلت له السعادة وإما أن تكون أسباب طبيعية تتعلق بطبائع الناس وهذه لا تختص بمؤمن أو كافر بل يشترك فيها الناس كلهم وإما أسباب عملية تتعلق بماذا؟ بالأعمال التي تعملها إذا هي ثلاثة أصناف فمن أتى بها جميعا حصلت له السعادة وحيا حياة طيبة وعاش عيشة السعادة ومن فقدها فقد عاش عيشة الأشقياء والعياذ بالله ومن حصل بعضها ولم يحصل البعض الآخر حصلت له السعادة بحسب ما حصل من أسبابها لمن تجتمع هذه الثلاثة أشياء ولا تجتمع هذه الثلاثة أشياء إلا للمؤمن ولأجل ذلك يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الصحيح عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله خير عجبا لأمر المؤمن ها قال ماذا؟ لأمر ماذا؟ المؤمن إن أمره كله خير إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له فإذا هذه الأسباب لا تجتمع إلا في حق المؤمن أما غيرهم فإنه تحصل له السعادة بحسب ما حصل ولكنها لا تكون دائمة ومن أعظم هذه الوسائل والأسباب التي تحقق السعادة وهي من الأسباب الدينية الشرعية التي لا تحصل إلا للمؤمن هو الإيمان والعمل الصالح الإيمان والعمل الصالح الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون فلنحيينهم حياة طيبة من الذي جمع بين وصفين الإيمان والعمل الصالح هذا هو أس السعادة من تحقق له هذان الوصفان فإنه سيحصل على أس السعادة وهرمها الأكبر فأصل السعادة معه قد يحصل له الكدر لكن أصل السعادة معه إذا رد الكدر بعد ذلك إلى هذا ذهب الكدر وبقيت السعادة وفيه يقول قد أشار إليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الذي ذكرنا وهو عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله خير إن أصابه خير إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له إذا أس السعادة وأصلها هو الجمع بين الإيمان والعمل الصالح ولأجل ذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى قال في سورة العصر إن والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر أي في خسارة وشقاء إلا من آمن ها إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فمن تحصل على هذين الوصفين فقد حصل أصل السعادة وأسها وهرمها الأكبر فلا يشقى بعد ذلك بإذن الله نعم Shaykh, may Allah Azza wa Jal preserve him. He went on to mention, he said, 
that verily happiness happiness The Shaykh wanted to mention and he said that verily happiness <clears throat> is something that is attained and we know that many people they do search for happiness in different ways and different methods. Some of them they search for happiness within their own bodies and this is something that it doesn't make sense. Reason being is because eventually your body with, with, with regards to itself eventually it will be and it will turn back to that which it came from, meaning Torab, okay? The meaning that the Shaykh was saying here, he intended that it doesn't make sense for one to search for happiness through his own body. And some of them, they search for happiness through their, their age, meaning their life and how long they've lived for. But eventually also that will come to an end. The Shaykh, he said, but the best means and the best way for one to search for happiness <coughs> That it should be with regards to the heart. With regards to the heart. And the Shaykh, he said, that if your heart attains that happiness, which is different to the body or the age and what have you, that will come to an end eventually. But with regards to your heart, that if your heart attains that happiness and it reaches that state of happiness, then the rest of the body will be the same, in the same state and the same manner. And the Shaykh, he said, you can find, and he gave the example that you can find a person who is sick, meaning his, his health, and you, it's apparent with regards to his body, his health has some sort of illness. It was afflicted with an illness, so he is sick. But his qalb, his heart is and has found and attained true happiness. So he may be sitting next to somebody who also is in a state of good health, different to him. However, that, that person that's sitting next to him, his heart, hasn't found true happiness and he could be in the room and he is the most severe with regards to illness however because his heart has found that content with regards to happiness then he is the most happiest person despite the fact that his body and his state his well-being is not of the state of happiness it doesn't look like he's happy but because of his heart finding and reaching that state of happiness then he has attained true happiness And then the Shaykh he said that maybe it could be so <clears throat> that a person can have good health and the reason why they haven't reached, even though they display happiness, they haven't reached a true state of happiness is because of the fact that their heart has not found that state of true happiness. And then the Shaykh he said that happiness splits into three different categories. The first category, the first category is the different means of the deen of Islam. Meaning the means and the different reason of Al-Islam and the Sharia of Al-Islam. And from them is that which is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. So the one that implements that which we have been told to implement with that which comes in the Quran and Sunnah and he comes with them and he implements them and he practices them, then this person will achieve and attain true happiness. So this is the first type, the first category, i.e. implementing the religion of Al-Islam. The second category is that which a person is able to achieve Happiness with regards to things that are natural, okay? Things that are natural. And this, of course, covers and within it, all the different types of people enter this type of category, meaning whether they are Muslim or not Muslim. Because certain things that they do, they're natural things. As for the last one, the Shaykh, he said the third one, then it is the different things that one can do with regards to actions. So the one that comes and puts forth different types of actions and acts of worship, and he implements them, then he has reached and he will attain true happiness. And he will live a life of happiness. And then the Shaykh, he said that with these three things, if one is able to have all three of them, 
then that is the highest stage. And one will be able to taste the sweetness of true happiness. They will be able to live a life of true happiness by having these three different things. The Shaykh, he said, as for the one that doesn't have any of them, then he will live a miserable life and a life of non-happiness. And then the Shaykh, he said, may Allah preserve him, he said that if one has one or two, meaning he's missing one or two, then he would not taste the true state of happiness. It w he won't be like the first category who has all three. Then the Shaykh, he said, these three things, so they are, of course, implementing the, the deen of Islam and practicing the deen of Islam in totality from the Quran and Sunnah and the natural things that make someone happy and also the actions, acts of worship. These three things, will not, you will not find them in anybody except for a true believer. You won't find these things in anybody except for a true believer. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said that verily the state, the hal, or the affair and state of a believer is amazing. The affair and the state of a, of a believer is amazing. All of his affairs are good. All of his affairs are good. If he is afflicted with harm, then he is patient. And that is better for him. And if he is afflicted with anything of goodness, then he thanks Allah the Almighty. And that is also good for him. And these things, you do not find them except in a believer. And then afterwards, the Shaykh, after he mentioned this hadith, he said, this hadith here, it shows us what true happiness is. Meaning, when a person is afflicted with harm, or if he is blessed with a blessing, the way he reacts, and this is the state of a true believer. The Shaykh, he said that as for the other type of uh, means that one can take in order to achieve true happiness, then it is having faith, i.e. iman, and doing righteous good deeds. And doing righteous good deeds. Putting forth righteous good deeds. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned the verse where Allah talks about those people that put forth, the one that puts forth good deeds from the male or female, then we will enable them to have a true life and a true state of happiness. And then the Shaykh, he said, this verse is so profound that it mentions that the one that has happiness, Allah mentioned the Quran, meaning they will have and will enable them to live a life of true happiness. But what is the condition? How are they going to be able to live that life of true happiness? Then the way and the means is that which the Shaykh made as a principle, having iman, i.e. faith, and doing righteous good deeds. Whether male or female, brother or sister, male or female, and then the Shaykh, he went on to mention, may Allah preserve him, and he said that having, good fa having faith, i.e. iman, and doing and putting forth righteous actions, it's like you're building that state of having a happy life. And this is from the basics and the foundations of having a happy life and attaining happiness. And it is by consisting, it consists of two things, iman i.e. faith and righteous good deeds. And then the Shaykh, he mentioned the verse when Allah mentions <clears throat> when he swore by time and he stated Allah the Almighty that verily mankind is in great loss. I.e. all of mankind. All of mankind is in great loss except the one that, who's the one that's not in great loss? Allah went, went on to mention, he said, the one that believes. So of course this is Iman and puts forth righteous good deeds. These people are the ones that are not in great loss. Subhanallah Shaykh Nasr. Wa min al-asbab allati tuhassalu biha al-sa'ada wa yudfa'u biha al-hammu wal-ghammu wal-qalaq al-ihsanu ila al-khalq al-ihsan ila al-khalq bil-qawli wal-fi'l wa anwa'i al-ma'ruf wa kulluha khayrun wa ihsan ومن فعل ذلك 
يحصل السعادة برا كان أو فاجرا يحصل نوعا من السعادة وهذه من أقدار الله الكونية التي وضعها في عباده ولكن المؤمن له منها أكمل الحظ والنصيب وذلك لأنه يمتاز أن إحسانه صادر عن ماذا؟ عن إخلاص لله سبحانه وتعالى وإذا كان الإخلاص الإحسان صادر عن إخلاص فإن الإنسان يتحمل فيه ما لا يتحمل من غيره إذا كان إحسانك تبتغي به وجه الله عز وجل فوجدت الأذى في ذلك الإحسان فإنك تتحمل لأنك لا تطلب حظا للنفس بخلاف من يحسن إلى الخلق وهو يطلب حظا لنفسه فإن أوذي تضجر ولا يحتمل فهذه من ودجل ذلك يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ماذا قال ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء آه مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما وكذلك من الأسباب التي تحصل بها السعادة وهي من الأسباب العملية ويدفع بها القلق الذي ينشأ عن توتر الأعصاب ويكدر القلب لا تبقى فارغا لا تبقى فارغا بل اشتغل بأي عمل من الأعمال النافعة سواء كانت أعمال دينية أو أعمال دنيوية لا تبقى فارغا إذا بقيت فارغا هجمت عليك الوساوس والأفكار وهجم عليك الهم والكدر فلا تبقى فارغا اشتغل بما ينفعك سواء عملا دينيا أو عمل دنيوي ولكن كما قلنا وهذه من الأسباب التي تشترك بين المؤمن وغيره فمن عمل وأشغل نفسه بالعمل والعلم ولم يبقى فارغا لم يجد لم تجد الهموم والأكدار والوساوس طريقا إليه ولكن المؤمن يسعد بذلك العمل إذا كان يخلص فيه لله سبحانه وتعالى يعمل هذا العمل لكي يتقوى به على طاعة الله لكي يأخذ منه مالا فيتصدق فيه سبيل الله سبحانه وتعالى لكي ينفع به أمته لكي ينفع به أبناءه فإذا لا تبقى فارغا هذه من أسباب السعادة وكذلك مما تحصل به السعادة ويدفع به الهم والقلق لا تفكر فيما مضى ولا تهتم بما سيأتي بل كن ابن يومك اشتغل على العمل الذي يكون في يومك فلا تفكر في شيء مضى ولا تهتم بما سيأتي لأن الذي مضى قد وقع وانتهى لن تغير في الأمر شيء وما سيأتي هو ليس في يدك ولا في يد أحد إنما هو في يد الله سبحانه وتعالى ولأجل ذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يتعوذ من الهم والحزن الحزن يكون على الأمور الماضية والهم يكون على الأمور المستقبلة فكن ابن يومك لا تفكر فيه وسلم الأمور لله سبحانه وتعالى ستحصل السعادة لقلبك أما من يفكر في في الأمور الماضية فإنه سيبقى حزينا كدرا تجد رأسه مطأطأا في كل أحواله يفكر في أشياء قد انتهت لو جلس فيها فكر ألف عام لن يغير في الأمر شيء وهذا من الحماقة هذا من الحماقة وكذلك تفكر في الأمور المستقبلية أين الزوجة التي أريد أن أتزوج بها؟ أين المال الذي أريد أن أجمعه؟ أين السيارة التي أريد أن تفكر في أشياء مستقبلية ليست بيدك قد تموت الآن ليس كذلك؟ 
قد قد تاتي زوجه تنكد عليك حياتك او انت تنكد عليها حياتها حتى يكون هناك عدل ومساواة بينهم أليس كذلك؟ فاشتغل وكن ابن يومك حتى تسعد فلا تفكر فيما مضى ولا تهتم في ما سيأتي وستحصل لك السعادة إن شاء الله صلى الله عليكم شيخنا بارك الله فيكم. And the Sheikh he mentioned, may Allah preserve him, and he said, and from the things that enable a person to reach true happiness, then it is being kind to the creation, being kind to the creation. Having ihsan, putting forth good deeds and being kind to the creation. These are from the things that enables one to reach happiness and to attain happiness. Whether it may be from speech or action. All of this is goodness. And all of this, meaning one being kind towards the creation, whether it may be by uttering something nice or doing an action, an, ac an action that is of kindness, then all of these things enables one and helps a person and aids them in attaining true happiness. And the Sheikh said whether they are a person that is upon obedience or a person that is not upon obedience, meaning they're disobedient to their Lord. Meaning even if they're rebellious and they're, they, they're people that, that, that they um, get up to no good, whether they are on this category or not, whether they are good and obedient to Allah or not, if they are kind to the creation then they will reach some sort of happiness they will be able to taste some sort of happiness and then the sheikh he said however as for the believer as for the believer then of course he will be able to achieve more than that which a person that does this that is not a believer will achieve and the sheikh said what is the reason the reason is because of the fact that a believer will put forth a good deed and if he has sincerity and if it consists of sincerity then of course it, he will be able to withstand and take anything that will come in his way whether he's putting forth a good action the sheikh gave example for example if one <coughs> was to do something an act of kindness towards another person and they receive some sort of harm they receive some sort of harm when they are putting forth that good act of kindness. The Sheikh said that because he's doing it sincerely for Allah's sake, then what's going to be the, the, the outcome? He'll be able to be patient upon that harm. He'll be patient upon that harm that he may receive from the person he's being kind to. Why? Because of the fact that a believer, when he does something sincerely for Allah's sake, he doesn't want to be rewarded except by Allah the Almighty. Except by Allah the Almighty. So therefore it causes him to persevere and to be patient, which is opposite to a person that does an act of kindness for his own purposes and his own reasons, meaning it's not for the sake of Allah. Then this person, of course, won't be able to withstand and he won't be able to persevere and be patient if any harm was to come his way. The Sheikh, he said, He mentioned the verse that verily upon the meaning, the, the Sheikh, he mentioned the verse where it talks about that there is no good in many of the people. With regards to their secrets and that which they have, there is no good with many of the people except for those that call to sadaqah, giving charity, or doing good things, enjoying the good, or creating and resolving problems between the people and then the shaykh he said that Allah went on to mention he said those people meaning the shaykh is explaining the verse that they're doing it for the sake of Allah and the shaykh he said that the proof for it that the one that does it seeking 
Allah's face, meaning seeking the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal alone, then verily we will give him a great reward. We will grant him a great reward. Why? Because the reason why he's putting forth the act of kindness or that good deed is for the sake of Allah. And then the Shaykh, he carried on and he mentioned that the one that, fi the one that finds himself searching for happiness through his acts of worship for the sake of Allah, he doesn't see it as, he doesn't belittle that action. Why? Because he knows that if he does the act of kindness towards someone else, for the sake of Allah, he knows that it will benefit either his children, his offsprings, or it will benefit the ummah. So that way he knows that the act of kindness that he's putting forth, it won't be to waste and it won't go to waste. But rather, he will seek reward from Allah the Almighty. Then the Shaykh, he said, from the things that supports a person that, is, that has some sort of anxiety or that has stress, then it is due to certain reasons. Why? A person will be in this state of having anxiety, having stress and what have you. The Shaykh, he said, it's because that they think these people, this, these people that we mentioned, those that have anxiety or stress and what have you, it's because they think of the things or the events, the past events, the events that happened in the past and also the events that are going to happen in the future. The Shaykh, he said, you should not be like this, but be from the sons, from the children of today, meaning live today as it is today, as it stands. Don't think about the past or think about the future. Don't make, this, don't make this something that takes about your time and it wastes your time. And then the Shaykh, he said, sadness, a person being upon the state, a person being upon the state of sadness, it's because he is caught up in his thoughts of the past. That's the sole reason. A person that has sadness and always feels sad, the reason being is because <clears throat> he is caught up in his thoughts of the past. As for stress and what have you, one being stress, then it's because he is caught up in thinking about the things that would come, meaning in the future. The Shaykh, he said that one shouldn't think about these things. One should not think about the past, nor should one think about the future. Because whether you delve into it, into, this, into, the, into these thoughts of the past or the future, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change anything. But rather, you should be from the children of today. Meaning you live the day as it is. The things that happen in the past, the past. The things that are going to happen in the future, the future. You have no control over it. Then the Shaykh gave an example. He said, from those people that think about the, the future, maybe one can think about marrying. I want to get a righteous wife or from the sisters, a righteous husband. They can think about it and they literally sit day in day out delving upon these thoughts thinking about a righteous wife i want my wife to be like this or righteous husbands and what have you of something they have no control over something that they have no control over and then the shaykh added he said not even that but they may reach a stage where they don't even get to see those thoughts that they were thinking about so there is no benefit and then the shaykh he mentioned he said may allah preserve him he said as for others some of them they think about uh, uh, an extravagant car an expensive car and they start thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And they could die before they even are able to purchase or have that car. So the Shaykh, he said, he reiterated and he said again, do not delve into these thoughts and think about these things that you have no control over. Think about things that are happening today and be from the children of today. So you're able to act that which Allah has commanded you and you, you'll be able to attain true happiness. The Sheikh said that we'll stop for the call of prayer and then we'll continue during the Adhan and the Iqama. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله ومن الأسباب كذلك التي تجلب السعادة وتنشرح بها الصدور الإكثار من ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب وطمأنية القلب هي سعادته فأكثر من ذكر الله في يومك وليلتك حتى تسعد وكذلك من الأسباب التي تجلب السعادة وهي من الأسباب الشرعية أن تدعو ببعض الأدعية الجامعة التي كان يدعو بها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم التي تحقق لك السعادة ومنها وهو دعاء عظيم يشمل طلب الصلاح للدين والدنيا وهذا هو مفهوم السعادة يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في دعائه اللهم أصلح لي ديني الذي هو عصمة أمري وأصلح لي دنياي التي فيها معاشي وأصلح لي آخرتي التي إليها معادي واجعل الحياة زيادة لي في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لي من كل شر هذا دعاء عظيم تحصل به صلاح الدين والدنيا والآخرة وذلك هي حقيقة السعادة كذلك من الأمور المهمة التي تجلب بها السعادة وتتحقق بها السعادة ألا تتطلع لما عند الآخرين وارض بما كتب الله لك وقد قرر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ذلك في حديث عظيم جدا وهذا الحديث عند البخاري ومسلم يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم انظروا إلى من هو أسفل منكم ولا تنظروا إلى من هو فوقكم فإنه أجدر ألا تزدروا نعمة الله عليكم من أكبر أسباب الشقاء والتعاسة أن تنظر لما عند الآخرين أنا أريد أن أصبح مثل فلان عنده كذا وكذا 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 وأنت بطال لا تتحرك فتنظر وتهتم وتغتم وتحصل لك الشقاء ولكن في الأمور الدنيوية جعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لك ضابطا وهو الذي لا يتكلم إلا بوحي انظر إلى من هو دونك شخص ليس عنده شيء ليس عنده بيت ينام في الشوارع أو شخص مريض جدا لا يستطيع أن يتحرك وأنت قد رزقك الله صحة وعافية فاحمد الله وارض بما أنت عليه فانظر إلى من دونك حتى ترضى ولا تنظر إلى من هو فوقك حتى تشقى فإذا نظرت إلى من هو دونك رضيت وحمدت الله على ما أنت عليه ولكن في أمور الآخرة انظر إلى من هو فوقك 
وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون انظر الى من هو فوقك انظر الى الصالحين انظر الى المتقين انظر الى السابقين فاعمل مثل عملهم حتى تلحق بهم اما في امور الدنيا فكما اخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فمن وطن نفسه على عدم التطلع للاخرين فانه سيعيش حياه السعاده ولاجل ذلك يا احبه التطلع الى الاخرين من اكبر اسباب الشقاء في الاسر وبين الزوجين تاتي المراه تنظر في الجوال تنظر في وسائل التواصل تذهب عند صديقتها ترى ما شاء الله البيت جميل تضع فيه اثاثا جميلا او ترى في وسائل التواصل هذه تاتي بكذا وهذه تذهب الى السوق الفلاني وتشتري من السوق الفلاني وزوجها مسكين يشتغل حتى يصرف عليها الاكل والشرب فتاتي وهي تتطلع عند الاخرين فتشق عليه بما لا يستطيع فتفسد الحياه بينهما وينفصلا ما السبب التطلع لما عند الاخرين هذا من اكبر اسباب الشقاء فوطن نفسك على ان ترضى بما قسم الله لك تكن اغنى الناس ولا تتطلع الى الاخرين فستعيش في شقاء لا تخرج منه ابدا تفضل شيخ محمد The Shaykh, he went on to mention and he said that from the things, from the, re the means of attaining true happiness and that which will bring about tranquility and open up, opens up one's chest and heart is remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. The remembrance of Allah, the Almighty. And then the Shaykh, he recited the verse where Allah mentions that verily within the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find sakina, tranquility, tamanina. Verily with, with the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find tranquility. So the Shaykh, he said, try your utmost best to increase in the amount of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning doing the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. Try and increase in the amount that you do and then the Shaykh, he said, and from the things that aid one in attaining true happiness, then it is to make dua, supplication. And from the supplications is that which, the, from the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ad'iya, the, the supplications that he used to make to his Lord, Allah the Almighty. And then the Shaykh, he said, there are many, but from those supplications that he used to make, and within this dua, this supplication, it consists of true happiness. The Shaykh, he said, the dua where the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Oh my Lord, <coughs> fix my religion, that which is important for me and that which will aid me in my worldly life and fix that which is with regards to the dunya, my worldly life, that which I live in, my livelihood, and fix my akhirah, meaning the hereafter, that which will be my final abode, and make me have a happy life. In that which I do, make it of goodness in this world, <clears throat> and make my death a mercy for me a mercy for me from all of evil so the sheikh said here that this dua is and it consists of true happiness so one should read these supplications day in day out and then the sheikh he mentioned something important and he said that from the greatest of things unfortunately that in, that makes a person live a life of destruction in complete opposite of happiness then it is looking at other people's lives looking at other people's lives with regards to the worldly affairs 
And then the Shaykh, he said, and he quoted the hadith, the profound hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he stated upon the meaning, and he said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look towards those who are beneath you, those who are below you with regards to worldly affairs. Meaning they have less than that which you have of worldly affairs. Look towards them and do not look towards those who are above you in ranks with regards to worldly affairs and provision. Don't look towards them, but rather look towards those that are beneath you and below you with regards to the worldly uh, life. As verily, this is from the things that increases one's uh, thankfulness towards Allah and his blessings. If you look towards those that are below you. So then the Shaykh, he explained it further and he said that many people look towards those that are above them in ranks. And they see them that they have cars and they have things that they have been blessed with with regards to the worldly affairs. And this causes about destruction and it causes one to not have happiness and true happiness. Why? Because he would not be content. The person that looks towards the person that is above them in rank with regards to worldly affairs, they would not be able to thank Allah and have that content in their hearts of being happy with that which they've been given. And this is wrong, Ikhwani. So one should always try their best to look towards the one that has less than them. Because if you look towards the one that has less than you in regards to provision and worldly life, then what is it going to cause you? It's going to cause you to thank Allah. It's going to cause you to be thankful towards Allah. It's going to cause you to always thank Allah and remember and be happy and thank him from the blessings and the bounties that he has given you. And then the Shaykh, he said, that many people look towards social media and what have you and you look and you search and you see people how they're living their lives and you say you want this and you want that this here in itself is dangerous because it's going to cause you to want something and it's going to make you forget about all of those things that you have been blessed with so don't look towards the person that is above you in ranks with regards to the worldly affairs but rather look towards the one that has less than you and is beneath you and below you and it will cause you to thank Allah Azza wa Jal and then the Shaykh he said that one should always do this each and every single time you look towards the one that has less than you and he reiterated on this point because it's very important he said do not look towards the one that is above you and the hadith the Shaykh he mentioned it then the Shaykh he said he said from the greatest of affairs and things that cause about friction and problems and destruction of the households is what is looking towards those that are above you in ranks. And the Sheikh gave an example. He said, for example, a wife may be married. Okay, she's a wife and she looks on social media platforms. She looks and sees that which the other people have and she sees that they have money and that they're doing this and they've been, you know, the woman, the other wives have been spoiled and been given so many different things that her poor husband is not capable of doing so, okay? He's mesquite. He's not able to do that which other people have done. So then she requests all these things in terms of worldly life and she requests so many things and the husband is not able to do so and it causes about friction in that household. Why? Because she has looked towards that which is above her in terms of Provision and worldly life. And then the Shaykh he said, from this, it causes about great problems and destruction in the household. So then he the Shaykh he mentioned again and he repeated, he said, do not do such a thing, but rather look towards that which and the people that are below you in terms of provision. <laughs> الوسائل التي تحقق السعادة كثيرة ولكن الوقت قد ضاق وما أخذنا فيه إن شاء الله الكفاية ومن أراد أن يتوسع ويرجع إلى أكثر من تلك الأسباب فيرجع إلى كتاب الوسائل السعيدة أو الوسائل المفيدة للحياة السعيدة للشيخ عبد الرحمن بن السعدي رحمه الله
وأسأل الله بمنه وكرمه أن يكتب لنا ولكم حياة السعداء وأن يجنبنا حياة الأشقياء وأن يجمعنا في دار كرامته كما جمعنا في هذا المكان المبارك وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد He concluded and he said that there are so many different ways to and means of attaining and achieving true happiness. And they are many in number. However, the, the, however, we are restricted with regards to time and we don't have enough time to mention the rest. But they are many and they're plentiful. But the Shaykh said, hopefully, that which we have covered and touched upon Insha'Allah, hopefully it is enough and it has reached the intent behind mentioning them, the ones that we mentioned. And the Sheikh, the Sheikh he said that for the one that wants to um, read and further his knowledge with regards to this specific topic, then I advise them to go back and return back to the book of Sheikh Nasr al-Sa'idi, rahimahullah, the means of having a beneficial happiness or having or attaining beneficial happiness and one can benefit from this book. And then the Shaykh made dua for us. And he said, May Allah Azza wa Jal unite us in his paradise the way he has united us in this masjid. And the Shaykh made other duas. Jazakum Allah khair, Shaykh and Shaykh. Khair al jaza wa ahsan Allahu ilaykum wa nafa Allahu bikum. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha 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 il